So we used a lot of INET data um, and kind of linked them to these maps from the 1900s to think how does redlining um, influence or is associated with wildlife biodiversity. So we were interested in how historical redlining, which was this discriminatory practice in the United States in the 1900s that um, kind of denied access to financial resources to neighborhoods of racial and ethnic minorities, which led to overall disinvestment in these neighborhoods. And so we're interested in how that policy was associated with contemporary levels of wildlife biodiversity across different measures. How is that wildlife community, so the different kinds of wildlife in a neighborhood different from another grade? So if these red line neighborhoods compared to these green line, more favorable grades by the Federal Housing Association and local lenders. And then also really interested in the bias in INAT data. So how do individuals encounter species differently across these whole grades based on observations reported and how many unique animals were in those observations. Answering this kind of question across California is really, really vast geographically, right? And it also requires really fine scale data at the neighborhood level. So areas like this park right here. And so INAT allows for these really fine scale observations where individuals are walking around, taking pictures of, you know, a bird, an insect, um, or an arachnid, things that um, are a bit hard to capture in these standardized surveys. And we need a really rich neighborhood level uh, data. And so INAT provided a really good opportunity to really merge this data with this uh, digitized maps of redlining in the 1900s. The major findings are that redlining is associated with lower levels of wildlife biodiversity across California. And so these redline neighborhoods, which are predominantly today black and Hispanic communities, have a lot less levels of unique animals. They have smaller wildlife communities, and they're also encountering wildlife at uh, a slower rate. These results kind of show that there's an inequitable distribution of biodiversity across these California cities. And we know that biodiversity walking in parks and encountering animals is really good for things like mental health and well-being. And so um, really taking these results and thinking about how do we merge social justice initiatives, um, housing initiatives, redevelopment initiatives with thinking about legacies of the past so we can build a better future, better housing, better cities.